worship the Lord and thank Him for the word He's bringing to you to make you ready for the rapture. Understanding and submitting yourself to the heavenly calling. The heavenly calling is of great challenge. Faces much challenge. If you understand that those challenges come because of your call to heaven, you will arm yourself to endure, to overcome. In Jesus' name, we pray. Father, we are so grateful to you. Thank you for preparing us for this heavenly calling. To make it to heaven. I'm requesting that your children will indeed prepare themselves. Accept your call to preparation to endure and overcome the world so they can be in heaven in jesus name we pray preparation to face end time challenges preparation to face end time challenges. The end time began right in the days of the apostles. If that is so, then we in this generation are living in the end of end time. Predicted characteristics of end time. If these were so in their time, then it is doubly so in our time. In Matthew chapter 24 verse 12, The Bible says, And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Talking about the end time. Iniquity shall abound. Because the disciples asked him a question. In verse 3 of Matthew 24. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives. The disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And now he said, The sign of the end of the world. One of such signs is iniquity shall multiply. The zeal of many shall drop, wax cold. As we are seeing it now. And end time also shows increase in satanism. Increase in demonism. 
if the devil right in the days of John was said to be of great wrath over mankind because he knew he had a short time how short his time after 2000 years how short is that time how angry is Satan now for his last walk? So, end time, our time, is characterized by increase in demonic presence and activities among men. Whereas his works were being hidden before, he was operating behind the curtain. Now he's operating clearly. Men are announcing him clearly. We see people wearing horns. We see them growing some teeth that look fearful. All to resemble Satan. We see people testifying of Satan. They love him. And of course, church of Satan, where he is practically worshipped. This is the end time. Hence, there is increase in dead both physical and eternal death because where sin multiplies the judgment of death multiplies along with them the soul that sinned it shall die and the bible tells us in isaiah chapter 5 verse 13 to 16 about the enlargement of hellfire. Isaiah chapter 5 Therefore my people are gone into captivity because they have no knowledge and their honorable men are famished because they are famished and their multitude dried up with thirst Therefore hell had enlarged herself and opened her mouth without measure and their glory and their multitude and their pomp. And he that rejoiceth shall descend into it. So you can see that is the situation of the end time that sinners are dropping more rapidly to hell because of sin and iniquity. In our day, I say, the end of end time, we see sin in its various grades and colors around us men women youths and children swim in sin it described in a language in isaiah chapter 1 verse 4 ah sinful nation a people laden with iniquity a seed of evil doers children that are corrupted they have forsaken the law. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger. They have gone away backward. This is our state. This is even the state of the church in many places. Sin has overcome there. They don't bother about righteousness anymore. They're not looking for it. The ministers are not there for righteousness. 
they are playing the game of church they are playing game they are not aiming at heaven god righteousness let's avoid hell no that's not part of them from one sin to another sin various kinds of sin various kinds of sin Yes. That is what is happening. Satan, the God of this world, the father of sinners, is in control of the lives of sinners. He designs the activities and fashions of life to be followed, to be practiced among men and women in the world in order to provoke God to wrath to anger and to doom the souls of the people in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1 to verse 3 Ephesians chapter 2 Verse 1 to 3. And you had he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. Wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now walketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past, in the lust of our flesh. Fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. Among whom is he said that the God of this world has designed a course, a way of life. How life should be lived in the world in every faculty of life how life should be lived in schools in the market in the church on the streets in the government and in the community he designed should live should be and controls the people by his power he controls the people directs them propels them compels them pushes them instructs them commands them to follow the course he has designed for them that's what satan is doing you find yourself being forced to attend the meeting you are attending not a good meeting you find yourself forced to eat what you are eating not a good thing to eat at all you find yourself you are doing which is evil not a thing to be done why you are under force that is what is designed for you the course designed for you to follow others are following it you are following although not willingly but because you are under the god of this world under satan and that to live after the dictates of your mind what your mind tells you you go for it what your heart wants you say take your heart may desire the property of somebody you might need to kill the person to take that property and satisfy yourself according to the course of this life 
Yeah. According to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now walketh in the children of disobedience. This is the spirit now that is walking in your life. Now. Operating in your life. And in the lives of others who are disobedient, disobedient to God, disobedient to rules and regulations, and when by nature the children of wrath. Now, that puts you under the anger of God, the judgment of God. You don't belong to him, you don't fear him, you don't respect him. And so, he is determined to punish you. And the punishment of God, whatever God doeth, he doeth it perfectly. The punishment of God will be perfect in your life. To make you regret forever for God creating you. Why? You allow Satan to spoil you. So, that is the situation that we are in various fashions are being produced and men follow these fashions women various fashions of nakedness are being produced in the, by satan from the satanic world by people that are serving him and others just follow Yes, this world understand it better. Let me tell you about the nature of this sinful world. This world, Galatians chapter 1, verse 4, tells us it's an evil world. Who gave himself for our sins that he might deliver us from this present evil world? The world we find ourselves in now is an evil world. It's not a good world. It is not. Wickedness is going on in the world. The people living in this world are ignorant. They are living in wickedness. They find themselves yoked together with Satan. To do evil. To walk wickedness. That is it. Satan is in their heart. Are, are in their lives. To teach them to think evil. Plan evil. Do evil. That is all that is in them. Yes. Yeah. Luke chapter 22. Let's see what the Bible says there from verse 1. Luke 22. Verse 1. The Bible says, Now the feast of unleavened bread drew near, which is called the Passover. And the chief priests and scribes sought how they might kill him, kill Jesus, for they feared the people. Then entered Satan into Judas, surnamed Iscariot, being of the number of the twelve. And he went his way and communed with the chief priests and captains, how he might betray him unto them. And they were glad and covenanted to give him and he promised and sought opportunity to betray him unto them in the absence of the multitude can you see Judas had been working with Jesus for at least three and a half years as a close disciple but I'm telling you about iniquity in this life the miracles of Jesus the good things Jesus did. 
I don't know what. Is it because what? Is it because Jesus reproved them? Or what happened? This man yielded himself to Satan. The next thing was to kill Jesus. He wanted Jesus dead. He wanted Jesus dead. So he went to the quarter where they wanted Jesus dead and met them and told them he had Jesus to sell unto them. That he would give them the desire of their heart is to tell them when Jesus is alone somewhere where the multitudes are not with him he would tell them that time that's his career and when they that they could have opportunity to get Jesus killed what a joy they were glad and promised that they would give him money this money if you see the evil that transpires on money among men is marvelous is marvelous so he now began to look for opportunity when will I do this when will I strike at what place should I strike where how I've made a promise I told them I would do it so whatever you laughing with him his mind was i will kill you M wickedness that's the world that is the world in acts of apostles chapter 5 verse 1 to verse 3 the bible says hold a portion and kept back part of the prize his wife also being privy to it, and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. And Peter said, Anania, where had Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land? Lying. Lying even to the Holy Ghost. Sinful man, full of lies. They claim to be a Christian, but lie is in his mouth. He says he is a minister of the gospel, but lie in his mouth. They don't accept truth. Man, may tell lie on you. With over your life. And this multiplies. In our day, in chapter 13 of Acts of Apostles, verse 6 to verse 10, the Bible tells us, saying, And when they had gone through Isle unto Paphos, they found a certain sorcerer a false prophet, a Jew, whose name was by Jesus, which was with the deputy of the country, Sergius Paulus, a prudent man, who called for Barnabas and Saul, and desired to hear the word of God. But Elimas, the sorcerer, for so is his name by interpretation, withstood them, seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith. Then Saul, who also is called Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost, set his eyes on him and said, O oh, fool of all subtlety and all mischief, thou child of the devil, thou enemy of all righteousness, will thou not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord? See people here. Son of Jesus. But Jesus is son of Jesus. But he's a witch, a wizard. 
and was aimed at frustrating the gospel of Christ, frustrating repentance in the lives of men, resisting the ministers of the gospel so that they do not succeed in bringing souls to Jesus. But they, they may be, because he was called a prophet, which means I'm connected with God. I'm speaking by God. My God, but for iniquity. All the works they're doing is to frustrate this gospel, is to destroy the right men, resist them. That's iniquity of this world. Demons have taken over. Demons have carried people. Majority now are in the hands of Satan. Serving him consciously, willingly. Willingly. Some unwillingly, but no, op no, no option. Maybe until they become used to it and that's our life. That is it. That's the world we are in. Full of all subtlety. All wisdom. That's why it is a craft. Which craft? It's a craft. It has to deal with intelligence. It has to deal with, un with wisdom. Cunningness. Now the devil was more cunning, more subtle. So that is how it is. Do we talk about Simon the sorcerer? In Acts chapter 8, who, in verse 9, who himself was considered God by some because of the power of Satan he had, he accumulated. But there was a certain man called Simon, which before time in the same city used sorcery and bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that himself was some great man, to whom they all gave heed from the least to the greatest, saying, This man is the great power of God. And to him they had regard because that of a long time he had bewitched them with sorcery. He used witchcraft on them. And was having control over the entire society. They looked to him for power. Power for protection. Power for attack. Power for success. Power for destruction. Oh, come back to one man. Simon. The city was controlled by witchcraft. There was a man there that trained others. Was it not so in Nigeria? Was not T.B. Joshua raised up by the devil for this purpose? Up to now, many people have not known that he was not of God. Because he had done, he had confused them. He had convinced them by the, the acrobatic demonstration he was doing. And by fake results, lying wonders. Yes, yeah, so if you say TB Joshua is not of God, it's as if some people will want to fight you. Why? They had been sold to it. They had been bewitched. So that's what I'm saying. Is it was he the only one? This is the case in the world we are in now. Bewitchment. Powers of darkness have entered into the church. Yes. Hence, many have been in union with Satan and have been corrupted to the pain of God that God says, I regret creating man. Speaking in the language of men. I regret. Because every imagination of his son is continually evil. 
Man is evil. His thoughts, his ways, his association, he wants what he wants to do in marriage, in the home, in the office, in the market, everywhere. As man, in union with Satan. Yes. What is the implication now to the man of God, the child of God, the daughter of God, the, the woman of God? What is the implication to you to be in a world like this? Yes, the implication is that the way of righteousness has been narrowed up. The way of righteousness, as Jesus said it, in the book of Matthew chapter 7, yes, verse 13, Enter ye in at the straight gate. Verse 14. Because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life. And few there be that find it. The way of righteousness has been narrowed up. It's not wide. It's not. It has been narrowed up. So that not many can move there. As if it's so narrow that vehicles, two vehicles, cannot pass themselves. One must park on one side and allow one to pass first, and allow the other to pass first. It's so narrow. It's not easy to walk in righteousness. It's not easy to practice righteousness. It is not. In every sphere, every place, in where you are, it is not. The activities of wicked men and Satan fill up all departments of life, making righteousness difficult to those that desire to serve the Lord. Go to the school system now you will see a growing power of evil and wickedness. All effort is going on in the schools not to allow the godly to survive in it, whether he be a student, a teacher, or a lecturer. There is corruption in everything. Corruption in, admi in admission, before you get into school, the money you are to pay. Corruption in examination. To pass exam in the schools, it's not easy. In some of the secondary schools, is it some or many? The righteous student that does not want to be helped because he wants to be undefiled, will be asked to stay outside. In fact, someone said, some of these students said, they asked them to stay outside until the ones that paid money for the exam had written to some points before they asked them to come. Make them fail. So that they should also pay money and get themselves corrupted. It's not easy. In the secondary school, oh, there was, we have heard about many lecturers, some of these lecturers, that will say, before a woman passes through him, his course, he must sleep with that woman. Be the wife of anybody. You will go and book the hotel yourself. And now say, sir, I have gotten a place and describe the place to him. And people are doing it. To pass the exam. To ensure before you have certificate, you have level. Before you get it, everything about God and heaven is wiped out from your life. 
They are doing it like that. In the secondary schools, they pollute the small girls there. That is what is happening. The teacher of righteousness is also finding difficulty. You must deliver your subject. Why are students failing your, your course? Who we'll, we'll dismiss you from this work? I didn't bring you here to, fail my, to cause my people to fail. Whatever you will do, as other teachers are doing, you must do it to make sure my students pass exam. We have a good name. What, the, what does that mean? Go and show them the answer. If you don't do that, you will lose your job. You see, the righteous man, the righteous woman is threatened. Leave God. Leave this heaven. Come and join us and let's live our life. It's then you will, you will live and eat and have your peaceful dwelling. If you want to maintain that righteousness, you can't do it here. Righteousness has been the way has been narrowed up. Narrowed up. It's good I tell you this because we're already striking the end. In a short time, we will be there. But many will have to be left behind because righteousness has been narrowed up. What are we to say about employment and promotion? To be employed to any meaningful job is not easy. Much more to be promoted or appointed to an office. You pay. You promise salary of six months. That for the six months that I'll be working, you will be taking it. You will be taking for six months. Then, okay, you can come. Otherwise, who is taking you? Or oh, as a young you know what to do? Brought it even to young boys now. Homosexuality. Go to hotel, boy, for your for for homosexuality. Huh? It's heavy. It's heavy. Many are giving up the certificate of righteousness. Many are turning because they cannot endure. I'm telling you. The pressure is very strong. The pressure is very strong to get a job. What about getting promotion? You want promotion. It's a simple thing. You want posting. It's a simple thing. You know what to do. They put this our righteous sisters into a trap. So that they cannot be faithful to their husband. They cannot. They can organize a course and say, we are traveling outside the country for a course. You, 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 with you targeted woman, that they are going to spoil in immorality over there. Because they can't get you here. They are carrying you to where they will get you. Where they will push with money and open up. I miss it. I miss it. And Samson did not know that the Spirit of God has left him. It's heavy like that. It's strong like that. And you, girl, hey, no man has slept with me. They laugh at you. They mock at you. That is a bad testimony. Then you are not a woman. How can you Say, no man has slept with you. How can you, young boy, any woman, you are not a man yet. They laugh at you. They mock at you until you get ashamed and then they go and organize one for you. That is the world. That is what is happening. What about the market system? It's narrow on the righteous. Business Business? What business? To get money. It's as if Satan is the one to even give you the money. 
And he wants you to touch somewhere, touch, some, touch something, and then he can give you, but it's a defiled money. What about this, our people running taxes? Is it easy with a policeman on the road? You must give offering. Yes, you give offering. Otherwise, how will you move? And the passengers are ready to cooperate with the policeman and give you lashes. So, give the man, let's go. Please give him, give him. They will come and want to fight you. Is it not a common thing they do in the society? Is it you that will not do it? Give the man, let's go. Give the man, let's go. Brother, the way is hard like that. To go to heaven, to go to heaven, the devil is ready to squeeze you. The devil is ready to malhandle you. Yes. Yeah. The unions in the market. We need your money. Pay. And we are going to buy, to uh, sacrifice to the gods that will give us success in this business. I will not do it. We will close your shop. We will close your shop. And they are ready to do it. To close your shop. To close your shop. They are ready. So that if you are not careful, you are gone. All this thing that Daniel reached the den of the lion, you didn't understand until Satan will organize one for you. Is then you say, oh, Daniel, you tried. That you went to the den of the lions because you, kept, you would keep yourself spotless and undefiled. You tried. All this worship of man that the three Hebrew children, Shedra, Meshach, and Abednego, refused and had to go into the fiery furnace. You don't understand until one is organized for you. Is then you say, oh, does it take up to this in Christianity? Does it? Then, if you are not prepared, you will give up. That's what we're talking about. Preparation. To face end time challenges. Yes. That is it. Preparation. To end, I mean, to face the end time challenges. Man and demons threaten the life of the righteous. The evil world is ruled by the following evil powers. Number one, the power of money in bribery. Number two, the power of immorality required to receive the world's blessing. Number three, the power of satanism in witchcraft, occultism, occultism required before some kind of appointment or employment can be given. That's the world. Satanism is there. Occultism is there. Somebody was telling a story a governor gave him contract. Yes. He went to the accounting section. The governor has given me contract, did this and this, and, and has recommended money. So pay me. They were doing him like this, turning him that way. He tried with them. Governor gave me this work. He went to the governor and said, These people are not giving me money for this work. He said, You must belong. Belong where? You must join the occultism. Where the governor, governor himself is in. Eh? For money, my soul should be lost. For money. Have you not been challenged like that? And some of you yielded and have become witch, witch now. You have become a wizard now. You are now in marine kingdom. Because of a man you want to marry. You wanted to marry. Because of a lady you wanted to marry. 
And the lady said, I belong. If you want, belong to. Ah, I can belong anywhere you are. Do you agree? Yes. Do you agree? Yes. Mm, let's go. You appear in the water. That's where I belong. Let's continue. The marriage will continue. If you don't continue, it's difficult also for me to leave you because you have seen my secret. I mean, these things are strong like that. The world. The state of life. The temptations of life. Challenges of life. Yes. You love somebody. It's a mentor. You are not aware that it's, it's a satanic where the mommy 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 is is a witch you're not aware but you love and when he really sees what well, she really sees that you love so much he will say let's perfect the love to perfect the love is to carry you over there and this has confused your life you are in a place where you can't talk because you, you have been made timid they have put fear in you. You have entered into a, a law, a system where nobody talks until they have died, until they start changing your mind to say there is no God. By the way, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. They make a fool. My brother, it's as hard as that. The church of Christ is not left behind. Satan is the general overseer and founder of many churches. He himself is the general overseer. He is the founder of many churches. He has entered into and influenced great number of churches and Christian organizations and has corrupted the truth and holiness of God among them. He has entered freely. That is the majority now. Majority. When the Lord brought about revelation, talking about the dressing, the jewelry, the wearing trousers, they attacked it. They attacked it. Satan provoked overseers. They rose up. We don't want away with that thing from the earth. They said so, Paul, the apostle. Away with such a man. From the earth, they said so of Jesus Christ. What? Should I crucify your Messiah, your King? Away with him. We don't have any Lord except Caesar. So that's what they're saying. The church says no to the words of the word of righteousness. The church says no to the voice of God, the prophetic voice of God, the revelations of God, which are justified in scripture. They say, no, we don't want. They start, the church is their own. They're the general overseer. They're the founders. And they say, we don't want. Why? Man and Satan in contention against God. Man and Satan in conspiracy against God. So, you find yourself among them. You find yourself under them. They block you from truth. They block you from truth. And you find yourself in raw for eternal dead. Who will serve you? Except you cry out. Except you're bored. That's the situation. That's in the church. The pastors are not really paid well so that they should steal. In that case, no righteousness. They don't pay them. Go and steal. Go and steal. I'm not talking about in the righteous church where maybe for you start the church. Definitely suffering is there at the beginning. But these people, the money is there purposely. They clear all the money from them. Don't pay anybody. How are they to live? They will go and steal so that they, nobody's name should be in the book of life. That's what they plant it purposely. It's a game. It's a lifestyle plant in satanic kingdom. 
They sent women to those who are claiming to be righteous. They sent people there, just like the banks. You have money, they say, women, go there. Go and tell that man he should bring money to our bank. Go and laugh in his face. Whatever he's looking for, you know how to do. That's what they do. Corrupt the church. And the pastors too. This power, you, you see the manifest. They have to be committing immorality regularly to be able to get anointing. To do what they're doing. So the righteousness should not be there. Not in them, not in those who are membership, in membership. So you see the story. The church. Both leaders and members are engaged in activities without righteousness. They are following traditions of men. They are following the rudiments of this world. They are following, they are serving with their mouth. They are following the commandments of men. They have laid aside the word of God. What about marriage? Getting a true Christian for marriage is difficult. As both the young men and ladies are majorly under Satan in witchcraft, marine powers, and all kinds of corruption by masturbation, fornication, lesbianism, homosexuality, pornography, and bestiality. It's not easy. It's not easy. Satan has affected them. Now, young boys have been corrupted. Both young boys and girls by pornography. Where you will watch the sexual act performed in various styles. And they watch it. He did the such that just go and say you are looking for something else. Pornography will just appear and pull you to go, and, to go into the place proper. Hey. That is it. To get a woman to marry. How, who is patient to pray well? Mean in some places, young women are hindered from being born again by the devil so that the men can only marry witches and wizards. In other places, there are no men so that the women can go into immorality since there's no men to marry. The world is like that. The world. Let's, ex let's expose this so that when you know this, you will know how to fight to redeem yourself. You know how to fight. To get yourself. What about the family life of husband, wife, and children? This also has lost control of scripture. Men and Satan have turned the commandment of God upside down in the womb. While the scripture puts the child under his parents, child, children, Obey your parents. The devil and the government turn it upside down. Parents, fear your children. If you touch these children and they report to us, you are going to prison. Make sure you don't beat them. In the school, child, did your mommy beat you? The child doesn't know anything. I must tell what happens at home. Yes. In fact, my mommy held my ear and pulled my ear. I was crying. Eh? We're coming. We're coming to your house. Yes, police has arrived. What happened? Your child reported that you pulled his ear. His ear. Why are you doing that? That's child abuse. That's child abuse. I was told a story of a woman in America. The woman had partial hearing. So he was so in his in her talk with her child, she speaks loudly. So it, it appeared as if it was a quarrel. One time, since they told the child, here is police number. Anything that you know that is wrong, you don't like, call police. They were talking with the woman, the child. The child called police. Child of eight years or so. Called police. So the police arrived in the 
compound. The woman saw police. He said, yes, yeah, somebody called us. He said, no, nobody called you. Nobody called us here. No, somebody called us from this house. I said, nobody called you here. How many of you are here? It's myself and my child. He said, child, call police. He said, yes, I call police. What, has, what happened? This, my mother is just shouting at me, shouting at me. And I don't like it. Woman, let's go. <laughs> Woman, let's go. Let's go to where? We are going to police station. Where were you shouting on this woman, on this child? Uh -uh. My child. I said, go and answer that one in police station. Let's be going. I think they asked the child, what do we do to your mom? We should lock her up. Yes. For how many? Two weeks. That's what the world has done. Wives, submit yourselves to your own husband. As it is fit in the law. But the, the devil changed it. I said, husband, you are not the head of the house. Your wife is the head of the house. If, you, if your wife reports you, your own is finished. We are not going to judge and say, uh, did you, did you, did you. We will carry you. If your wife reports you. So a woman can just, the, to do a wickedness to a man, and, and say, police, they come. What happened? This man slapped me. Hey, your honor is finished. Me, I slap you. Go and answer that one in police station. The way you design it is not that you defend yourself. So, you see, they change the thing. And a spirit of stubbornness, masculine spirit has entered into the woman. They are now the men. And the woman now, and the men now are the women. They are now the owner of the house. It's a man that should pack his clothes and leave. So that is society. And since the formulas of life, family life has been scattered, there can be no righteousness. You fight. You quarrel. You are confused. You are afraid to speak and to correct. And this masculine spirit has, is working hard all over the world. And that the women are lacking this obedience now. Obey who? Who is to cook food for who? Do women wash their, the cloth of their husbands again? Some will sit down and say to the husband, go and cook food. I'm hungry. I want to eat rice today. He's talking to the husband. And the husband is going to do it. And not knowing that it is a sin against God. Because the Lord said, let the women be keepers at home. Let the women be keepers at home. Where did you turn it to your husband? Are you not feeling fine? Are you sick? Why are you making that habit? And you don't know you're sinning. You don't know heaven is blocked against you. Because you've broken the commandment of God. You're taking the lifestyle of backsliders and wicked people. To bring home. You have arrested your husband. You threaten him. And the man, because he doesn't, he's not looking, he doesn't want trouble. It's, is that what armed robbers do? When they meet you and say, bring that money, what do you do? Do you say, ah, it's my money? Do you tell them like that? You give to them and say, take this one. Okay, another one is in my pocket. Again, wait, 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 wait. You're bringing it out by yourself. So that they don't discover it and say, eh, you're hiding another one? To save your life. Then where is righteousness? Where is the holiness again? That women are not submitting to their husbands. Of course, some husbands are cruel, wicked, because there are so many women in the world, they marry as they want. So this is what is happening. The world has gone to this point. The world has gone to this point. The government is taking over to promulgate laws that contradict laws that force people to do evil. Yes. Yeah. Now, all women, all police women, all women in every force, paramilitary, you must wear trousers. But God said, let not the woman put on that which belongs to a man. Our, our government said, I should do it. Government. Is government greater than God? But that's where I will get my food. Eat that food well, because you are not going to heaven. Eat that. 
Churches have accepted with them. Churches have accepted with them. Churches that don't know God. Hmm. Churches that don't know the power of God. Churches that don't know that God can change laws and decrease. So decrease. He changed laws. Nebuchadnezzar said it. Powerful King Nebuchadnezzar. Say, I know the Lord. I now I know God. He changes the law. He changes the law. The God of Shadow, Meshach, and Abednego. You don't know him. Whatever the government says you go and do, contrary to God. I'm telling you, they push you such that you go far away from the kingdom. And you may not feel it. He says it's the government. NYSC. It's government that says we should wear trousers. And pollute people in your life. Government said it. You will tell God whether he, government is greater than himself. I'm telling you, that's the pollution of this life. Great challenge to the godly. In your case, what is it that is hindering you from being righteous? Where are you? That righteousness is difficult now. You are not married. That's another thing. People just want to pass time with you. It's a challenge. You cannot even give the reason why you're not married. It could be some demonic forces somewhere that have arrested your life. Don't marry. Just be passing time so that you should go to hell. You should go to hell. Divorce her. Let her go and remarry. Heaven finish. Divorce him. Let him go and remarry. Heaven finish. The thing is so hard. What about drugs? What drugs? What drug is doing in people's children's lives? What? What the world? That is the world. Now, all this pose great challenge to the godly. What should they really do? How can you make help? Grace does much more abound. I've told you of Daniel. I've told you of Shedda, Meshach, and Abednego. And many others. Paul beheaded. John beheaded. And all to make righteous. Some denying salvation. When they say, do this, we will serve you. Say, I can't do it. So that they can go to this heaven. They can go to this heaven. Are you taught this Christianity that prepares you in the midst of turmoil? This type of Christianity, that is what Christianity is all about. Now, great challenge. What do we do? Matthew chapter 11. I read verse 12. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence. And the violent take it by force. From the days of, the, of John the Baptist, violent, the, the sinners are not treating the church kindly. Society is not treating godly people kindly. It's by force. The country, do we find it easy? Or do we find it easy? Do they, do they consider that that human beings are there with them? Made out than them? More educated than them? Do they bow down that? It's violence all the way. Trouble. They have taught Christians how to fight carnally, spill blood, defile themselves. The kingdom of God suffers violence everywhere. Life is tough. Life is tough. Jesus said, 
it will, a man needs to be violent to take the kingdom by force. If you are gentle, you can't make it. If you are full of shame, you can't make it. If you are full of fear, you can't make it. If you are full of respect for persons, respect of persons, you can't make it. Because the person commanding you to lie flat in the office is your boss. The one commanding you, follow me, is your boss. You say, I will, ah, you know, I must, so what will I do is my boss. You won't make it. The person telling you to sign that thing is your boss that has been laughing and playing with you. All the laughter and playing is to make you go to hell. To sign a false document and say it's my boss. You and your boss will stand before God. That is it. The kingdom of God suffers violence. It is the violent. Jesus said it's violent that the violent that take it by force. Did Jesus play with the Pharisees? If he did, he would have never gotten in his soul. He did, if he did, he would have never got his soul converted. Because those people were violent at Jesus. And Jesus released violence. Woe unto you, scribes, Pharisees, hypocrites. Who would touch him? Let's go. Leave them alone and be blind leaders of the blind. I'm telling you, <laughs> it will be violent that will take it by force. And he, he did so, released violent approach to the kingdom and got you. To come to him, you must go on violent approach. If the Christians in Nigeria take a violent approach, all these trousers they're giving to women to wear to dumb their soul would have stopped. But they yeah, ain't no, uh, you know, you know the Muslims, uh, the, you know, uh, may the Lord tie your mouth. Because of this withdrawal attitude, you are selling Christianity. You are selling Christianity. But apply or leader who demands sin from you that a man is asking a precious woman whose name is in the book of life and eh, you know this promotion you are looking for will you give yourself to me hey please go and balance properly before you answer him balance very well and say, i thought you were a reasonable man so you're a fool you don't know what the Bible says about you. That he that, he that commits adultery with his neighbors who have lacked understanding. You as, as you are sitting now, you lack understanding. Try you again. <laughs> that is the word of God. Be thought about it. Otherwise your life will go. Otherwise your life will go. So, we can see the violent, violence against the kingdom of God all down history. Much more in our end. The violence stated by force. Sin and Satan have been in the world among men from the beginning until now. But righteousness still thrives and prevails from generation to generation. Why? It's because the righteous mean to go to heaven. And they take it by force. Yes. What should you do then? Number one, fill yourself with God's truth and righteousness. Now that you have found grace in God's side and are under his true servant that gives the word of God. Open your stomach and eat. This will help you tomorrow. Back to the law of sowing and reaping. Eat the word. Attend conferences where you will get the word that will polish your life, strengthen your life. It's going to work for you tomorrow. 
Go with extra oil. Go with extra oil. That is what I want to tell you. Five wise virgins carried extra. This prayer, you are hearing these people praying, those who pray sincerely, is going to be difficult for backsliding because they have sown much into their lives. When a rich man is saying, hi, I don't have money, he is not saying that he doesn't have 50 million. It's too small for him. It's different from a poor man saying he doesn't have money. When a poor man says he doesn't have money, in fact, even 10 naira he doesn't have. <laughs> but when a rich man is saying, I don't have money, don't compare yourself with him. Because what is there is just that it's too small for him. He's dealing in mil billions. The thing has reduced to just less than one billion. So he says, hey, my money has finished. He's not talking about you, that, that the greatest money you have known is 100,000 naira. You, you celebrated it. So the thing finished. You didn't know. By the time you pay your school children's school fees, you bought uh, this one, say, oh, let me buy a good mattress in the house. Let the thing finish. Say, hey, my money has finished. I don't have money. That is different. Those who have been able to immerse themselves in Christ by prayer, by study of the word of God, even when they are as oh i am not able to do this they are still doing something they have been elevated high they have been elevated high but you who can read don't study don't pray any wind can blow you blow you down so go extra i congratulate you who have prayed for two thousand hours in the year. I congratulate you who have read the Bible, read books, don't listen to messages. It will keep you against the evil day. That is the word of God. Be strong. Yes. In the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand in the evil day. Having done all to stand. Again, be determined never to compromise your stand with God because of the fear of man and desire for earthly gain. Remember the three Hebrew children before Nebuchadnezzar and Daniel in the government of Nebuchadnezzar and of Darius. Daniel, I, am, I will not transgress purpose in your heart, the Lord will support you. Purpose in your heart, the Lord will support you. My lips shall not transgress. My tongue shall not speak evil. As I am, no man shall see my nakedness. Tell yourself like that. And it shall be as you have said it. God will support you. I will never collect bribe. I will never give bribe. It's a tempting thing. You will have to be seeking God. Constant. But determine. Oh Lord help me. You will see. God will support you. These people will try. It will not work. The devil will send them. It will not work. I will never commit immorality. All girls will come and do what they want to do. It will not work. Beauty will become nothing to you. You have made up your mind inside. No man of any glory and money can attract you. None. Because you have told yourself, for Daniel purposed in his heart that he will not defile himself. Purpose in your heart. This Christianity, you will take it to the end. Yes. Yeah. Be prepared to face every persecution and suffering that God allows on your way, even death for righteousness and heaven, as Paul the Apostle displayed and confessed. Somebody came from Jerusalem and got the guide of Paul, the mantle of Paul, 
and bound himself. And then I say, here is what the Lord is saying. The man that has this guide shall be bound in Jerusalem. It appeared he didn't know Paul. Then the people who knew Paul said, It's your guide. It's your guide. Please, 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 please. God has revealed it. Don't go to Jerusalem. God, do I go to Jerusalem or not? Are you going to be hearing the voice of those people? I'm not the one speaking through them. Hey, Paul said, please keep quiet, all of you. I am going to Jerusalem. The prophecy is only telling me what I will suffer. It didn't say I should not go to Jerusalem. It's just saying, suffering is waiting for me. And suffering is part of life. Suffering is part of life. I'm telling you, it is the sweetest part of life. When you eat bitter leaf, ordinary water is sweet. Yes. Suffering. Don't reject it. Suffering is so beautiful that God himself said, let me come down to eat and test it. Because it's fantastic to suffer. Why are you refusing suffering? If you refuse suffering, then life is not complete. If you refuse suffering, life is not complete. But don't go and look for suffering by yourself. There is enough. It's the one God is bringing. God's own, accept. Your own, you are creating your own. Don't create sufficient. It's coming on you. That is it. So, he said, don't break my heart. I am not only ready to be bound, but to die. We kept on saying, woman, develop this. Because we know what Satan is using ungodly husbands to do. And they feel that you are helpless. What they say is you must do. Otherwise, they are your king. They, your husband is your creator. Your husband is what? Listen, it's God that gave you to that man. That man cannot remove you except God removes you. And when God says, leave that man, don't seek to be there. For heaven's sake. For heaven's sake. So be very free. Don't be a slave and lose your soul. That man is not greater than you. That man is not greater than you. Not that you will be stubborn to her, to him. No. But be frank about yourself and your God. Be frank about yourself and your church. He is not the one to determine your life for you. Does your husband determine the quantity of food you eat in the house? Or you eat your satisfaction? Then serve God to your satisfaction. As much as the scripture allows. So that you too can go to heaven. You too can go to this heaven. Yes. Be in fellowship with true believers and enjoy mutual edification and victories for two are better than one. Two are better than one. That's what the word of God says. And these two are people who know the Lord. Not people who are drunkards, witches and wizards, embezzlers of money that fill a church. Not those ones because their body is smelling of sin. They cannot help you. But two of like passion. Two that see the vision together. Two children of God. For they warm themselves. They revive themselves. They fight the enemies together to make it to heaven. So, make sure you are in fellowship with true believers. Commit yourself to the word of God in daily meditation. 
reading the scripture. Constant. Apply yourself. I'm so, it's a wonderful thing. The Lord really meant it to get many people from holiness movement to heaven. For this divine assignment he has given to put men and women into the scriptures. How, which women will you find them outside there that are committed to scriptures? I say, I have read the Bible from this to this within this one year. I have read about how, how many books. I have listened to 200 messages or 600 messages that is preached. I have prayed for 600 hours in the, in, in, in the year. Where will you find that one? But the Lord gave them to us here. I said, the Lord gave them to us here. And you are going to continue next year. It shall become your, your lifestyle. Making heaven will become easy. Because the Bible says it will make you strong. It will make you defeat the devil. It will, it will clear the cobwebs of your mind. And put understanding into your heart. Give yourself to it. Commit yourself to studying the books. And... Listening to the messages of true saints of God. To learn from their lifestyle and wisdom. Commit yourself. Commit yourself. It's wonderful. God is the one doing it. God is the one doing it. That every year, is it every year? Every conference, new, new books are coming out. There are books who are, who are still on their line. By the time the women come in April, more books. By the time youth come, more books. By the time ministers come in August, more books. By the time you come again in the next year, more books. I asked uh, the uh, brother in charge of printing to give me the list of books that he had published in two years. Hey, it was great. He gave me the list of books produced in this movement. Two years only. I said, this is wonderful. I'm more on the way. If you give yourself to reading these books, remember what the Lord told me, Linda, in heaven. I am, when you return to earth, join holiness Revival movement worldwide is my movement. The man I, I have placed there is my son. If you go to listen to him, you will just be qualified for heaven and waiting for the rapture. The materials we have produced, both messages preached and books written, any person can be made to go to heaven very peacefully if you give yourself to listening and to reading these books they are available get them get them look for them from where you are we have them in store we have them in store the books we have in store now should be more than 50 million worth I expect them to be going you should be demanding for them so we can have money to print more. Learn to read. Learn to order in your states and nations. Yes. Learn to order from your states and nations. So that the word of God should be going on. Distribute it free to people. Commit yourself to faith and prayers for God's sufficient grace for your daily living. Always be praying. Always be praying for this life. Be determined not to fall. Be determined that you will never give up. Be determined that money will not corrupt you. Money will not corrupt you. Tell yourself like that. Because it is vanity. It looks precious. Even if they give you one billion, what are you, what are you going to do with it? 
they give you one billion. Is it not the much accumulation that is causing trouble? They buy people that will cause trouble. They use it to do every atrocity. It's not good to have so much money. It is, it is not good. It's not advisable because you won't rest. <laughs> when we were in primary, uh, secondary school, a, a friend was telling another, at that time, 20,000 was a great money. He said, you, if they give you 20,000 in the, in the town, you will enter bush to, go to, to come to school because you will feel too insecure because you're holding 20,000. When you have too much money, it confuses your life. Learn to give it out. Learn to give it out. Learn to give it out. And let God direct you how to use it. That's wisdom. That is your wisdom to save your life. So my brother, my sister, may God keep you. The world is dark. The little light you have seen in front of you, follow it. It will take you to your destination. The Lord brought you here, a place of light, to learn righteousness. Commit yourself to this place. It's terrible. Many have fallen, but we shall not fall. If we follow the Lord, he will take us there. He is able to keep us from falling and to present us to the presence of his eternal glory. Yes, by his own wisdom and power. Let's rise up upon our feet and say, God, thank you. I have heart and I will do it. Satan will not get me. I have made up my mind not to fall. Man, woman, money can have not affect me. No man shall threaten me and I bow. Never. I shall not compromise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. I have chosen the way. I have chosen the way. I have chosen the right way. The way of holiness. I have chosen the way. I have chosen the way, I have chosen the right way, the way of holiness. Amen. Chosen the way. I will keep on following this way of holiness. Until I make it to heaven, the way of holiness. Amen. Chosen the way, chosen the right way, the way of holiness. Satan, listen to me. I am frankly telling you, you have lost my own life. Forevermore, Chosen, Amen, Chosen the way, Chosen the right way, the way of holiness. Brother, make this choice so you may make it if you follow this way, the way of holiness. Chosen, chosen, 
Just in the way, just in the right way, the way of holiness. I have chosen the way, I have chosen the way, I have chosen the right way, the way of holiness. Money cannot affect me. Money cannot buy my soul. I despise money for this way of holiness. Just in, just in the way, just in the right way. All the world is insufficient to confuse me. Because of this way, the way of holiness. I have made my own choice. My choice is holiness. You will watch me on this way. Till I receive Oh yeah Just in the way Just You will follow this way Until you make it Let God forgive your past Let God forgive your past But the present You have made a new choice Renew your choice Your decision You will follow this God of holiness Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Hmm. Make a promise. Tell yourself. Tell God. Tell your wife. Tell your husband. Tell your children. Tell your neighbor. I'm for heaven. I've made this choice for heaven.
Thank you, Father. Lord be glorified. Lord be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Brethren, let's pray for one another. There are people that are in a difficult place where Satan seat is. Let's pray that they will have grace to stand. That the devil will not pull them down. Wives under terrible husbands. Workers under terrible places. Whatever. May the power and grace of God keep them from falling. Let us pray. Thank you, Father. Keep them from falling. Keep them, O oh Lord, in the places where they are, in their marriages, in their families. They are working with money. Keep them, O oh Lord. Let them not fall. Let them not fall. Let them not fall. God, help our brothers and sisters. Help your daughters that are married to terrible husbands. That they will not squeeze out righteousness from them. They will not squeeze out righteousness from them. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus name we pray. We want to pray to pray for the government. Government of our nations, whichever nation you are from, that the Lord will control them. All these ungodly policies, they are bringing to cause the righteous to offend. May God resist them. May God make them change those laws. Open your mouth and pray. Father, all the laws of the government that are promulgated to weaken righteousness, to defile your children. Oh Lord, remove those laws. Oh Lord, change those laws. Change those laws. Thank you, Father. Change the slow. name we pray in our country Nigeria there is 
the National Youth Service Corps, which every person must go to that graduated from uh, with a HND with degree. And the ladies are made to wear trousers because they are training them with uh, paramilitary training. And these wear trousers. The provocation to immorality is higher than what the certificate will do to them. And the reward of it is deep. When men see them, so we're going to pray, God, all these military and paramilitary laws that put women into trouser wearing, cancel it. Yeah. Open your mouth, cancel it. Do so in your nation. Do so in Nigeria also. Father, we cancel them. All those laws. All those laws. Cancel them. Cancel them. Let them recognize your authority. Let them recognize your authority. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Worship. God, do it. God, do it. Jesus, we bless you. Jesus' name, we pray. Nursing services, security services, and others that compel the woman to wear trousers, we want to say the Lord will put an end to it. Yeah. And God will put in his daughters the mind of righteousness. They will exalt righteousness above money. Yeah. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. He has jobs to give to them. Let us pray in Jesus' name. God, stop this evil load. Thank you for answering. Thank you, Father, for answering. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you for answering. We are blessed. Thank you for revealing these things to us. We take it by force. We take the kingdom by force. We'll be violent about it. Back us up, Father. Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. The message you have just listened to is a production of Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide. Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide is a non-denominational ministry that is given to the propagation of Christ's righteousness and holiness in churches and nations of the world through crusades, revival meetings, production and spread of holiness literature and materials. For other spiritual materials, messages or inquiries, contact us on 0816-902-3948 or 0805 you can also reach us through our email address, Holiness Revival Movement at gmail.com. God bless you. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him should not perish, 
Grab everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Hallelujah. Jesus, I believe in you. You are my Lord and Savior. I believe. Came from here. 
purchased me with your blood. You are my Lord and my Savior. You left your throne above and took up the form of a servant for my sin. I believe